Hello, this is a very quick video about point and shoot cameras. I've shot a lot of point and shoot photography just casually, and there are a few things you need to know. So, number one, use fast film. These cameras usually aren't designed for longer exposures. They normally have shutter speeds that range from about 250th of a second to about 30th of a second or 15th of a second. So lower ISO films, ISO 100, maybe ISO 200 isn't ideal. I would always recommend using 400 or even 800. I know Portrait 800 is very expensive at the moment, but you'll get better results, trust me, just because they're not designed for slower films. And the results will be better, you'll get more stuff better, better exposed, and you'll just generally be happy with your images. Number two, use the flash. The point and shoot cameras have flash built into them, and usually that's just gonna be on auto. It will automatically fire the flash if necessary. So it'll fire the flash, and the flash is good. Usually, it varies from camera to camera, so check specifications. Usually, for about meter and a half to about three, four meters. Anything further away, the flash isn't going to be power enough, powerful enough to illuminate. So, use the flash when you're doing, say, portraits or pictures of people and something's close to you. Use the flash. The flash is amazing. The flash will make all your photos just sort of pop and yeah they will come out way better and you'll thank me but meter and a half to three four meters that is like the sweet spot any closer is going to be blown out any further away is going to be too dark so by using the flash you're making sure that that information is hitting the film and something is going to be recorded i work in a camera shop where people buy disposable cameras and they're often disappointed that their photos haven't turned out and often that's because they're taken to parties and they don't use the flash. They're indoors and they're taking pictures of people and it's not, not recording that information. So nothing comes out and they're very disappointed. So use the flash, please use the damn flash. It's so good and it's always automatic. You don't have to do any calculations. It's just there. So that's number two, use the flash. Number three, learn the autofocus system. If your camera has autofocus, so with the older, say, 80s, 90s point and shoot cameras, they will generally have autofocus on them. And what you'll get is when you half press, if you can hear, there's like a little click. The little click is the camera figuring out where it needs to focus and it's moving the lens to get a sharper picture. Now, with each camera, they will focus in a different area. In the viewfinder, there should be a spot or just like a little like bracket, something like that. That's telling you where it's gonna be autofocusing. You can see that little spot in the middle. There's me. So if I half press, you can't see the autofocus moving, but it is autofocusing with that little spot. Anything outside of that spot isn't gonna matter. So if I wanna focus on me, I put that spot over me half press and that will be me sharp. Whereas if I focus here and half press and then press the shutter, you heard that the lens was taking longer. You heard that the lens was taking longer to move because it was trying to focus closer. So it's trying to focus on this rather than him. And that will mean that I'm blurry and the mirror sharp. So yeah. The autofocus system, little patch. Use the patch, patch is very good. Learning how the autofocus system works will give you more reliably sharp images and you're less likely to have it where it will just focus on the background and not focus on what you want to photograph. Some cameras, such as the Contax T2 and something like, yeah, so this Nikon has a manual focus override on the top here where I can adjust the manual focus to either feet or meters, depending on where I want it. And 
This is designed for the underwater system, but is very good above water as well. That's normally always guesstimating. You're always guessing the distance and people are generally not great at that. So trust the autofocus system. It's built into the camera. It does a surprisingly good job compared to something like a disposable camera where it's a fixed lens. The disposable cameras usually are what's called a free focus lens. So it will focus on everything from say a meter and a half to infinity. And that's great for just general snapping. But if you do want something with that more blurred background, learning how the autofocus system works on one of these autofocus compacts is a good way to go. Number four, I think. So normally there's also a self timer on the camera. With this Nikon, it's on the top here. So you turn the dial down to go to the little stopwatch thing, which is your self timer. That will then give you a countdown to tell you how long it's gonna take the picture. With the Canon, there's a button next to the shutter button, which also has the same symbol. And that will give you, again, a set amount of time to put the camera down, have it somewhere stable, and generally get a more steady shot. There's no stabilization built into these cameras generally. Most of them predate stabilization. And having it on a stable surface will generally give you more reliable results. The self timer is actually a really good thing to use. And plus, if the people you hang out with aren't great at taking photos, which is, you'd be surprised how often that happens, it's nice to be in some of the photos sometimes. Number five, I think, film loading. So, film loading with these cameras. I'll show you with this one just because I've got it here. So, if I open the back, so, with these cameras, there is usually a thing, you can see it there, which says film tip. So that's telling you that the film just needs to get here. You don't need to push it down the side. You don't need to get it, tuck it into anything. The camera is auto loading. You can trust the camera to load the film correctly because that's what they're designed to do. And if you've got a camera with an LCD display, such as a lot of the Pentax SVO cameras, or the Contax cameras, or the Olympus cameras, the LCD display, if it's not loaded correctly, will flash either with zero or with E. If it's doing that, it may still let you take photos, but it's not advancing the film. So nothing's being recorded. So learning how to load your camera and if you can, go to a local camera shop, ask for a dummy roll of film. Most of them will have dummy rolls of film that they will let you practice with or even let you keep and use it. Because if you don't load the film right, you'll take a load of photos, you'll rewind it and think, these are all my photos, I'm gonna get them developed, get them developed and nothing comes out. With SLRs, often you can tell if the film's loaded because the little rewind will move when you advance. However, you don't get that with the, the compact cameras. I really, really encourage people, find the manual for the camera online because they'll usually show you how to load the film correctly and what to do if the film's not loaded correctly. So learning how to load the film, very important, highly recommend. Number six, this is the last one, I promise. Take the camera with you everywhere. You never know when you're going to need it. If you don't have the camera with you, you can't record it. I know that everyone has phones with them now and the phones will act as a more spontaneous way of taking photos, but having the film camera there is a more permanent way of sort of capturing those moments. It's not going to be the same as the phones obviously and can be less reliable, but if you don't have the camera with you, you won't learn how the camera works, and then you'll end up being sort of afraid to use it. Don't worry. The cameras were designed to do one job. They were designed to capture photos. So if you go out and use it, you'll often be surprised as how, as how good they are. They were designed to take photos well, and they were designed to be used. Don't be too precious about the camera. Use the camera 
They were designed to be used. If they're not used, they always run the risk of just disappearing. So use the cameras, enjoy the cameras, listen please to the advice that I've given. I've seen a lot of people have issues with little compact cameras. The compact cameras will be immense fun to use, but you need to spend the time figuring out how they work and learning the little things, little tricks and tips to get your photos better, to improve your photography and to capture the memories you want. So yeah, use the cameras, please. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful to someone. If you liked the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'm hoping to post more videos soon. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my Instagram in the description or my website maybe. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another video.